So what's going on dammers, my name is Mehul and welcome to another video in which we would be discussing about something known as Babel. Um, a couple of we weeks back I asked a question on the channel that how many people are actually excited for Babel 7 and uh, it's like 70% people don't even know what Babel is. So I guess you as a dammer should know what a Babel what Babel is because it's the hot thing right now in JavaScript, especially because JavaScript is moving so fast that the browsers behind are not able to adapt all the changes which it brings. So let's start with a very basic question. What Babel is? Well, you can think of Babel as some tool which allows you to write super advanced JavaScript. And by super advanced, what I mean the advanced features which you can use in JavaScript, which are not yet available to, to be used inside browsers. And Babel would take care of the rest. So it will try to compile down your advanced JavaScript features into the ones um, which your browser can actually understand. You can see that uh, uh, the example here, I just clicked and it disappeared. So the example here showed that you used next gen let keyword. By the way, it's not next gen now, it's basically supported in almost every major browser but you know you get the essence that it converted let to var and uh, const to var and basically stuff like that which allows you to use the new javascript at the same time not break people's browser that is extremely useful in today's world right so um, why do we use why do we actually need babel right that's the second question which came to my mind when I started using Babel. So the deal with Babel is that, as I said, it allows you to use new JavaScript features. It might sound just a single sentence to you, an ordinary one, but it is very powerful. So for example, we can start with very basic. Let me just zoom in here and let's see if I can. So let's just start with an array. Right, so I'm gonna say constant array is one, two, three. Right, you can see it immediately converts const to var. And by the way, I'm using this Babel REPL, which is like uh, stands for read, evaluate, print, and loop, I guess. So basically, you can have a REPL for anything. For example, inside your terminal, when you write node, it opens a node REPL. Right, so it's it's kind of like you give it in the input. And it um, uh, in the real time gives you the output as well. Notice how I did not use a semicolon and it inserted a semicolon by itself. So Babel likes semicolons, right? Because semicolons are actually essential if you're compressing your JavaScript. But because you're using Babel, you can omit semicolons if you want to. It's, it's a personal choice. But I do like to um, not use semicolons mm, partially because it kind of adds noise because it's not required. So, but some people prefer semicolons and that's okay. I'm fine with that also. So you can see, um, let's just perform some other operations. Let's just console log and I'm gonna destructure this array, right? So you can see that what we got in here is uh, something you might not be able to get at first look, but I can explain it to you. What Babel did here is that Okay, let me just first of all tell me what output this would produce. So this statement is equivalent to doing like console log one, two, three, right? So what Babel did, because destructuring is not supported in older browsers, it's an ES6 feature. So to actually, you know, create a kind of a polyfill for that, Babel created a underscore console variable, made it equal to our own console because we do not want to modify the original console. And it called the log and called it with arguments with apply obviously if you know about apply you can actually specify an array which gets passed as the arguments see what happens if I say like const console is equal to hey hey something like that right so you can see that Babel is smart enough to name it to console too so it's not like um, dumb enough to like crash your code even if you are trying to use some sort of variables which Babel uses internally Right, so Babel is aware of that and uh, would uh, basically be compiled down to perfect code if, given if your original code is working. Right, 
So um, one of the features I can show you one more is uh, what happens with the, I guess, ES9 or maybe another standard should probably bring something like uh, optional chaining feature, which is um, present in a lot of languages like Swift, if you have used it. So what optional chaining is, let me just show you a real quick example here. So let's say I have like, uh, um, let's just say we have a key of name and we have like uh, JavaScript and uh, something like, let's just say, awesome ness 100 easy true right and then we have like php and uh, mm, awesome ness i can rate it like 60 and it's also easy right and c uh -huh -huh -huh. anything like that awesome ness 75 easy nope right so we have a little object like that so what i want to do is uh, let's just console log object dot name dot java dot awesomeness how about that all right so it looks fine but when we try to run this code you obviously know what would happen because nothing like java exists in our object we get an error right now sometimes actually a lot of times you do not want this error to appear right you just want the value to be null or undefined even if the branch down the object does not exist right it happens a lot of times i know it because i've faced similar issues while creating the code dump platform so um, this is actually very interesting um, proposal for the ECMAScript community and how you can basically use it is by optional chaining Babel plugin and I'm going to use the version 7 one because version 7 Babel is the latest one right so Babel plugin optional chaining this one right okay I just realized a couple of problems with our optional chaining setup and that is the REPL version uses version 6.26 of Babel, right? So we cannot use the optional chaining because it is supported only from version 7 onwards, right? So what I can do is just show you in the documentation for now because I don't want to set up a Babel project right now. We might do it in future um, when I will show you how to set up Babel for your own project. But this is just kind of like an intro to Babel tutorial. So we're going to stick to that only. So you can see in the documentation we can see if you write something like this and uh, if you have like loose settings just leave it it's like um, you do not want to do a, output a lot of code but at the same time you do not want to check a lot of stuff as well right so what it does is that uh, it would transform this foo dot bar into a stuff like this so we're gonna we're gonna first of all check if foo that is the object let me just copy this thing right here if I can show you. So we're going to check that if object.name.java, if I do stuff like this, right? So let's just, just ignore the error for now. So we're going to check if object.name is null. If that is true, then we're going to return void. That's it. Otherwise, we're going to proceed forward. Object.name.java and dot awesomeness obviously right if you have placed like something like this then we would have done another more check then we would say is equal to null if that is true you can see how complicated it can become object dot name dot java dot awesomeness oh if it is null then return just void otherwise stuff like that so you can see how babel would avoid you to write stuff like this and you can easily write stuff like this which is much more readable to eyes and much 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 more maintainable than the code compiled by babel but the thing with babel is that this question mark syntax the optional chaining one is so new i guess it's in stage one yeah if we take a look at the proposal 
for TC39, which is basically the place developers propose their proposals. And you can see it is in stage one right now. So um, browsers, I guess, do not ship the features unless they reach at least stage three. But with Babel, you can use stage one and even stage zero proposals, right? So that is pretty cool. So that was a basic intro tutorial to Babel. And I hope you guys like it because it is very awesome and very useful, especially as I said in the current trends of JavaScript when it is moving so fast and especially on the client side, not on the server side. As a matter of fact, React Native also uses Babel to transpile down the JavaScript code for its um, JSC for Android and uh, there's something else for iOS I don't know about that but uh, yeah React Native also uses it so and if you're on React Native like React Native 0.56 uses Babel 7 some beta version of Babel 7 but it has started using it using that and maybe in the future releases it will use the stable version of Babel 7 because it is uh, just been released I guess less than a week ago right so yeah that's it for this video and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe press the bell icon and share with your friends thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next video